It has been found that people start to get impatient if they have to wait more than 30 seconds for a lift to arrive. Bother! Leave it, Polly. It's stuck on six. Here she comes now. It's gone straight past. Don't fiddle with the button, Joan. It won't make any difference. Sorry. If I'm late for my meeting, I'll... The more floors the lift has to serve, the longer, the, longer the average waiting time. At last. <laughs> Let me squeeze in here, eh, Brenda? <laughs> the only way to shorten it is to have more lifts. This actually sets the maximum practical number of floors for a skyscraper, about 100. Whereas a 10-storey building may only need one lift, a 20-storey one needs two. Continuing on up, the lifts would eventually leave no room for anything else. Although modern lift controls have become more and more sophisticated, mechanically they're becoming much simpler and cheaper by using hydraulic power. They've become much safer. Like the device I'm standing on, which is merely a, a piston tight-fitting in a tube, and the hydraulic pressure pushes them apart, lifting me up. Now, if Tim pulls the pipe off, I still descend safely and under control. Because the water can't come out any faster. To make it even safer, Tim has now fitted a pressure relief valve. This still lifts me okay, but if Tim hangs on me, it limits it, so there's no way you can overload the device. <clears throat> Hydraulic power has proved so effective that it's now used on all kinds of machines. Hydraulic powered lifts are nothing new. They were first introduced in the 1870s and by the 20s had become a familiar prop in slapstick comedies. The lever simply opens a valve to let the water in and push the piston up. Hydraulic lifts needed no electricity, working directly from the mains water supply. Modern hydraulic lifts use oil instead of water, which um, keeps everything lubricated. There's a reservoir in the basement, and the oil comes through this pipe, and it's fed into this enormous ram that goes 80 feet down into the ground. Six storeys is about the maximum for a single ram. And this sort of lift uses more power than a conventional lift because there's no counterweight to balance the load. But they're cheaper to build, easier to maintain, and they're considered so safe they don't even have to be fitted with safeties on the car. The risk of a lift car plummeting to the ground may be negligible, but there have always been other dangers. One of the main reasons for people falling into lift shafts was while trying to escape from cars stuck between floors. Modern lifts have extra precautions to prevent this. They have this uh, extension underneath, or toe guard, to fill the gap. People also used to fall into the shaft after escaping through the hatch in the roof. Um, Modern lifts no longer have a hatch anywhere because it's been realised that people are actually much safer trapped inside. But these safety regulations do make lifts much more claustrophobic. In fact, they're sort of sensory deprivation chambers. The only clue you've got where you are is the indicators.
It's not surprising that many people have phobias and fantasies about travelling in lifts. Oh, I can't breathe in here. Oh. Polly, just you and me in the Garden of Eden. <laughs> Why is it stopped? This inefficiency drives me round the bend. I refuse to be stuck in here. Let me out! Let me out! These women bosses, they're only after one thing. My body? Oh no! Miss Matthias! What's wrong with dreaming? Perhaps Mr. Otis's original lift did have its advantages. You could always see exactly where you were and look up at the safety for extra reassurance. It travelled very slowly and being completely open, it at least left you with the feeling that you could escape if ever you needed to. Anyway, I hope this programme has convinced you that however unnerving and disorientating modern lift travel may feel, that in fact the lifts themselves are actually incredibly safe machines. Oh.